Well, I'm here with some sad news. It looks like Mike Lindell is hitting the rock again, as in rock bottom. New today, the My Pillow Company has been kicked out of a building where they make pillows. The landlord of this building in Shakopee says My Pillow owes more than two hundred thousand dollars in rent and other charges. Because of that, a judge evicted the company. This is the latest financial blow for the controversial founder of the company who made false claims of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election. That's right. Election denier, town crier, and incessant liar Mike Lindell is about to complete his rags to riches to rags circle of life story after being kicked out of a building where he owes almost a quarter of a million dollars in back rent. Because, well... I ran out of money. I have no money personally. Nothing left. Nothing left. I have lost everything I've had so far. You got it? The pillow-peddling pauper is so broke, he was forced to beg for money this week on Steve Bannon's Politburo podcast. We need to get rid of these electronic voting machines. You're not going to see this on Fox News, everybody. You're not going to see this over on Newsmax or Salem Media and all these platforms we trusted to talk about our election. No, you won't, Mike. Your old partners in crime have abandoned you because they prefer not to be referred to as co-defendants, which is why you're forced to lie on the Greasy Grifters' war room, a fear-mongering, hate-filled anger fest which, ironically, appears to be filmed in the Vatican gift shop. If only Mike could go back in time to 2016 and that fateful August day. How's the pull-up business, okay? It's awesome. And thus began the world's most expensive fanboy love crush. How expensive? In the seven plus years since Lindell sold his soul to the leader of the Gerther movement, he's lost over $180,000 per day, every day. Let that sink in. Oh, I will, Sybil. So the $400 million question is, why? Why throw away your entire fortune spreading lies for a portly prevaricator when there's nothing in it for you but public humiliation and financial ruin? So according to the American Psychological Association, liars come in all shapes and sizes, from habitual liars... It's not a lie, if you believe it. ...to sociopathic liars. Wisconsin has essentially admitted that I won... I won the election up there. And based on his past history of drug, alcohol, and gambling abuse, Lindell appears to fall into the pathological category. Liars who not only feel a compulsive addiction to lie, but will continue to do so even when it causes emotional, and in Mike's case, financial distress. Pathological liars also become very upset when their lies are challenged, as we saw during Lindell's Dominion defamation deposition. He's an ambulance chase and that's what you are. Rotten, horrible lawyers like you and the media, you personally did this. How dare him come and sue my pillow. He's a scumbag for doing that. Put that in there. Scumbag. S-C-U-M bag. Kiss my ass. Wow, not only does the sworn again Christian have a bad temper, but I don't think he's that smart. S-C-U-M bag? S-C-U-M bag. That would explain this clip we found from his middle school spelling bee. We don't have the clip. We have the clip. Oh, here's the clip. Your word is charlatan. 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 Can you use it in a sentence? In 15 years, you'll develop an addiction to crack cocaine and lose everything, then miraculously pick yourself up and amass a massive fortune worth almost half a billion dollars, only to lose it all to a charlatan. Country of origin? The country of origin is Queens. Charlatan. S H Arlatan. Charlatan. Hey, if you like what you're seeing, please hit the like and subscribe button and leave your thoughts below. And if you can afford to throw a buck or two into my virtual tip jar, it helps keep my show and democracy alive. Now, as we all know, Lindell has a long history of lying about his lumpy pillows. No, they're not lumpy pillows. Of course they're not. Specifically, they're bogus healing effects. I hear them all the time. I'd be walking down the street now since I am recognized that they, uh, they'll come up and tell me how it's changed their life. The pillow has actually changed their life. And <clears throat> whether it be uh, um, just feeling better all around, feeling better, or it's been some disorder where it's helped... Uh, relieve the, the symptoms of, you know, everything from fibromyalgia to migraines to headaches, uh, uh, snoring problems, sleep apnea, you know, all these different things. Now, Mike, like his psychopathic succubent, is an accomplished seasoned liar. They both use the people tell me or a lot of people are saying lies that are almost impossible to substantiate. A lot of people are saying they had spies in my campaign. A lot of people said I won and I'm very happy about that. Uh, a lot of people have been calling me a best speaker. What people? 
Who are these people? Can we talk to these people? Of course not, because they don't exist. These liars skirt the truth by saying, oh, it wasn't me who said it, it was someone else. But it's still a lie. And as Robert Reich says, Don't let Trump's lies become near truths. Be vigilant. Know the truth and spread it. And the media should stop mincing words. Report Trump's lies as lies. So pathological liars like Lindell also tell highly unlikely, dramatically detailed stories. Like when he told Newsweek that his drug addiction was so bad that in March of 2008, he didn't sleep for 19 consecutive days. Even though the longest recorded time a human has ever stayed awake was just over 11 days, set 60 years ago as an experiment by 17-year-old Randy Gardner in California, who was monitored closely by doctors. So who were Mike's witnesses? The drug dealers selling him the crack cocaine, who Mike says were so worried worried about his lack of sleep that they all got together with all the drug dealers in town and said no one is allowed to sell him any more crack because we all know how compassionate and scrupulous drug dealers are. Now kudos to Mike for kicking his drug addiction because as anyone who's ever addicted a drug knows, it's a tough habit to break. And if you want to lie and embellish stories about your personal past, knock yourself out. But when you lie about a product you're selling, well for that, there are consequences. In November, the company settled a case with district attorneys in California who sued the company over its claims that the pillows could help with conditions including sleep apnea, migraines, and fibromyalgia. While admitting no fault, MyPillow settled and agreed to pay over $1 million in penalties. And it's even worse when you lie about or defame someone else's business. Just ask the Fox Corporation. They'll give you 787 million reasons why it's a bad idea. And remember what happened the last time Lindell tried to lie on Newsmax. We have all the election fraud with these community machines. We have 100% proof. We at Newsmax have not been able to verify any of uh, those kinds of allegations. And let me read you something there. The election results in every state were certified and Newsmax accepts the results as legal and final. The courts have also supported that view. I'm revealing all the evidence on Friday of all the election fraud with these machines. Can I ask our producers, can we uh, get out of here, please? Hold on a second. Everybody hold on a second. Mike, Mike, hold on one second. Uh, let's that guy bailed on Mike faster than Dallas Yoakum. Yoakum was Mike's second wife, but like a lot of marriages, they slowly grew apart, fell out of love, and decided to call it quits. After two weeks. Here's the couple scene during Happier Day. So as we've seen, Mike hates the media and fake news. But if you want fake news, look no further than one of his other failing businesses, Lindell TV, of which he's poured millions of dollars in to amass an astronomical 274 subscribers. Or Lindell TV 2, with its 95 die-hard supporters. His channel is so fake, you can watch Bill Maher on this week's Diamond and Silk show. A pretty bold claim, since not only is it not THE Bill Maher, but Diamond's been dead for over a year. And don't forget to join the six subscribers of Reverend Bill Keller on his all-you-can-drink happy hour live prayer channel, all spreading their gospel of gloom and doom to their smattering of disciples. The sad thing is, even though Mike's reputation, financial empire, and self-esteem is being stripped away, he can't stop lying. Like a gambling addict who's positive his next hand will be that royal flush. But this dealer's different. This one won't cut him off to save his life. This one will let him crash and burn. And like any loyal junkie, Mike will spend his last dying breath and dollar chasing that election lie dragon until his legacy, like those before and those to come, will be that of a gullible, foolhardy rube who was addicted to the world's greatest charlatan. How's the pull up, is S-H-Arlatan. Charlatan.